In this video I wanted to look at the different effects of various camouflages and if they have any infrared shielding on them or infrared patterns. So basically what we're going to do is first film all the camouflages of a regular camera so you can see what they're like and then what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the infrared mode and we're going to have a look and see if they become very obvious or they're quite well hidden depending on how the infrared sort of shielding or patterns are done on the camouflages. So what, here, what we have here is German Flecton. So there's a Flecton raincoat laid out on the bottom. And then there's a Flecton shirt and also the Flecton trousers. All of them are slightly different shades of the same camouflage pattern. The trousers being the lightest, the shirt being the darkest, the coat sort of somewhere in between. So what we're going to do now is pull the curtains and switch on the infrared and see what it looks like under infrared. Okay, so as you can see here, these all look fairly similar actually in terms of um, colours. Nothing really stands out as being worse or better than the others. Um, obviously the one with more darker sections on I'd say is probably the best, but... Um, the jacket obviously looks as it looks. The shirt is probably the bit that has the best IR shielding on with the trousers. I'm not really sure until I look at the footage on a big screen how well they hide. But basically what you want to do with most camouflaged equipment is obviously have it so it's not really visible under IR light. I mean, because the issue is if you're using old IR night vision like what this is, or more modern kind of night vision which uses IR as well as part of the light amplification process, if it's not IR shielded or you know coated with some IR resistant dye or anything else, what ends up happening is the camouflage becomes very, very obvious because it will glow bright white or bright grey or whatever and won't merge in with the surroundings. But at least the flecked on, as you can see, there is some pattern still visible. It's not like it's suddenly gone really bright white or really black. There's at least, you know, an actual pattern to that. So I'd say the flecked on does very well in all its prints um, against IR. Okay, so what we have here is the famous Soldier 95 or 95 pattern DPM. The trousers are the closest to what DPM is meant to look like. Now, an interesting thing with the British Army is when they printed DPM, and this is a bit like the flecked arm thing, um, depending on what they printed it on, it either looked like it was meant to look like or it didn't. So the trousers are the darker, higher contrast ones that should work better under infrared. Um, the S10 mask bag, um, the S10 sort of satchel bag on the left I know doesn't work well, I haven't tested the coat yet. Now the interesting thing is British woodland camouflage used before the Soldier 95 sort of reprints of it. It used to be a lot lighter, you can look at Dutch uh, DPM I think it is which still uses the old British pattern. And basically the reason they darkened it or made it higher contrast was they thought that that would actually make it look better under infrared light, um, you know, to not be as obvious. So what we're going to do now again is flick the lights off, pull the curtains, and then look at this pattern under infrared. And here you can see the patterns under infrared. So the trousers work well. Where they did darken the contrast, that's done the job it's meant to do. It's not obvious. The coat's surprisingly good. Uh, but whatever material the gas mask satchel's made from does not work under infrared at all, as you can see. That's far too high contrast and obvious, especially when you compare it to the rest of the gear. Um, that satchel is literally going to glow in the dark. Some sections of the coat glow a bit, but not too badly. As I said, the trousers work well. But yeah, that gas mask satchel is literally neon, um, sort of in the uh, infrared. So it's kind of a bit of a bad thought. I mean, they've moved to the um, MTP pattern now, so we'll test that in a moment. But it's kind of a bad thought if you were trying to, you know, be stealthy in the dark that some of your equipment wasn't actually coated properly for infrared use and would give you away in a very obvious way. Okay, and now for modern British Army MTP camouflage multi-terrain pattern. And you'll see I've got the shirt there, the trousers, the giant GSR gas mask satchel in the middle, and the Osprey water canteen thing. Now, I'll be quite honest, they've done a very good job at keeping the pattern consistent against all the things they've printed here. Uh, there's nothing there that stands out to me as being like very pale or very you know, higher contrast or lower contrast than the other things. Um, so, yeah, what we'll see now is what happens when we flick the lights off and go to IR, if any of this becomes very obviously different colours. Okay, that's all fairly good, except the GSR gas mask satchel. So why is it the gas mask satchels? Maybe it's the material they're made from, because I think they're designed to be waterproof. But if you look there, the trousers and the shirt all appear fairly consistent. 
the drinking bottle, um, sort of the canteen holder on the right is fine. But this GSR satchel is just crazy. So let's put these next to each other just to demonstrate. So that and that. If you look at both of those, you'll see that for whatever reason, the GSR satchel literally glows in the dark. So again, very bad if you were having to carry that giant satchel with you. It's a glowing neon target for enemies looking at you through night vision or infrared. Um, the rest of the uniform is absolutely fine, very good in fact. They've probably used some sort of special dyes when making the camouflage to hide it from infrared. As you can see, it sort of shades of, just looks like different sort of shades of greys, dark greys and light greys under the IR. So there's nothing very obvious about it at all. But yeah, the um, GSR satchel though is just literally a glowing neon target. Right, this one I should imagine will be the most interesting test of all. On the um, left we have East German Strip Down or East German Raindrop Camouflage. Now this camouflage is very good for when it was made because it works a bit like multicam. It's sort of the perfect mix between a brown and a green that's so bland your eyes can't really see it and the colour seems to blend in everywhere. The issue is it's not very disruptive. The needle kind of raindrop pattern on it stops working once you get a fair distance away uh, from it and it just looks like a big shape. Now, on the right is the Czechoslovakian equivalent of raindrop camouflage and the colour of it isn't as good as the East German one. Um, it doesn't blend in as well. But what's very interesting on the Czechoslovakian one, which will be very hard to make out on the camera here, is that underneath it, it has a second print. Um, and that second print is an IR layer, and the IR layer only appears when you look at it under infrared or night vision. So, what we're going to do now is again flick the lights off, and then be amazed at how good the camouflage on the right looks. Now, look at that. The East German Strictan is, you know, really obvious on the left, um, under night vision. Um, you'd stand out like a sore thumb just because it all appears to be one giant grey blob. But the Czechoslovakian camouflage on the right has developed a life of its own and it has this really interesting kind of splodgy frog spawn kind of pattern is what I'd call it. So let's just move this East German one out of the picture and pull across the Czech one so you can see it in all its glory. And yeah, look at that. That is an amazingly different looking camouflage once you've got the IR on it. It just looks nothing like it and out of all the camouflage we, we uh, you know all the camouflages we've looked at today i think this one is simply the best out of all of them because it has the ability to be two different prints it has a print specifically for looking at it under night vision so um what we can learn from this really is that western modern nato countries with loads and loads of money should be able to develop camouflages that look like that for whatever reason they're not able to probably because military industrial complex but again, what would be better for a British soldier, for example, having the GSR satchel glow like it does now, or having a pattern like this on it, which is really, really not obvious at all. So there you go. I hope you found this interesting, looking at various camouflages under IR. Uh, what I'm just going to do as well now is quickly get a couple of bits that don't IR very well, just to show you, you know, how they'd make you vulnerable and exposed. Okay, so what we have here is those sort of novelty terrorist style trousers I've got, like the 90s terrorist camo ones, the red, white and black ones, sort of very obvious striking colours there. I've got that camo hood I really like that works really well in conventional tests, and I've just got sort of um, a pullover hat for um, that's just got a camo print on, that again I don't think is going to have any sort of IR shielding on it at all. So what we're going to do is, again, flick the lights off, let's have a look at these in detail, and I bet that they're going to look totally bright and obvious once we uh, flick the lights off. And here you see the dilemma. The trousers on the left worked a lot better than I thought they would, but I guess that's just because they have a high contrasting pattern. But again, I think they'd still be a bit too obvious in the dark. But what's really obvious is the kind of, you know, real tree camouflages. I don't know if actual real tree has any sort of IR... Um, cancelling ability on it but you'll see that both of those other things aren't camouflaged at all now um, and this is kind of the crazy thing is this has a pattern that's not obvious at all to the human eye when you're outside in woodland and again this is kind of you know a disruptive pattern material kind of thing on it but with both of these once you go to the IR they just glow white um, you know so anybody looking at you at night vision you would be very obvious targets wearing those unless you were in the snow I guess um, <laughs> Yeah, 
So what we've learned from this is obviously IR shielding or ways of tricking IR and things like that are very important on camouflages, but it's a thing lots of people don't consider. So hopefully you've learned something interesting from this video and it's that when you um, make a camouflage or are choosing a camouflage, see how well it does under IR uh, before totally relying on it.